Okay, so when I showed you how to trim your scans, I basically was using this enclosed dinosaur form to demo. But unfortunately, um, it's rather difficult to get an enclosed model like this. A lot of what I'm seeing people getting are more of these open forms over here, like at the edges of, of this scan. It's just a, it's just a, um, you know, you're just getting a shell. You're just getting like a, an outer skin. Um, so I'm going to talk about how to fix that so that you can make a printable part from it. Um, so to start with, I'm going to just select a corner of this. Um, I for invert and D for delete. So the idea is that now all we have is this piece here. Um, if we try to auto repair this, all it's going to do is try and join these, these outer edges, the boundary together, and we'll end up with an inside out part missing the face of our scan. So the face of our scan is here. The pink stripes, that's the the back side of the of the mesh. Um, referring to normals when we have either like the front or the back. Um, and so the way to fix this is to um, we're going to go to the select tool. Command A for select all, and we're going to make this thicker so that instead of being an infinitely thin plane that cannot be printed and doesn't really exist in the real world, we're going to give it some dimension with extrude. Um, and depending on what your selections are, you should get something that creates a thickness. Okay? Now notice this all of these lines are parallel to each other. It extruded in a constant direction, um, which is, was selected here. Um, if you have a particularly convoluted part, uh, what you might find is that it's not helpful to do that because you have some faces that are facing, um, if these walls were straight up and down, you, they wouldn't be getting any thicker as you went up that way. Um, constant finds a good average for you, so it all works, but oftentimes what you're going to need is to thicken across the normals. Um, now this is set backwards, um, so we're going to offset in a negative number over here so that it extrudes away from your outside face and thickens all of your inside faces. And now you have a printable part. Um, something that I've noticed um, is that some people are having trouble getting this particular tool to work. Um, so if you've got a, if you've got a part like this and when you go to extrude it, shift, command A for select all or control A and extrude. Um, if you, when you select this, this kind of turns a deeper red and you get a red ring around it. That means that there is something wrong with your boundary line. And we can fix that by I'm going to go to W to show my wireframe. I'm going to find an outer edge and double click it. And what that's going to do is it's going to automatically select my boundary. Um, w, take wireframe off. It's going to get everyone too dizzy. Um, if we modify, we can optimize the boundary, and that creates a cleaner edge around the outside that doesn't have any overlapping and or non-manifold um, faces. 
Um, and once you do that, you can just trim off that outer boundary with the delete key. Now, if you're losing too much here, you can remesh this to have more triangles. You can select that edge. Um, edit, remesh, and increase the number of triangles that you have there so that you're not losing as much when you select that boundary. Notice it didn't lose much over here where the mesh is very dense. But if we back up, we lost quite a bit here where the mesh was um, fairly coarse. Um, so just keep that in mind. And then now when you select all, control A, and extrude, you should be able to get your, um, your extrusion to work. W for wireframe off, and Bob's your uncle, you can export that as a OBJ for printing. All right, thank you very much.